a lot of what we've done and the purpose that what, what we've done with sine and cosine so far is because a lot of real life situations you can model with sine and cosine. If you did all your practice and everything from 4.3, you'll understand that, right? You can model a lot of things with a sine or a cosine curve. You can't model as much or as many everyday things with these other functions. These other functions are the four that have asymptotes involved. You can't model as many everyday things because the graphs look so strange, right? Tangent more or less looks something like this. I don't want you to just draw that on here. I want you to try and you know, know how to have a bit more of a framework for that. For tangent, you need to you need to remember how to, well, for each of the four, you need to remember how to draw the basic graph. And then you're going to do the transformations. The transformations are the same as anything else, right? If we, if you look at the, if you look at, if you know what the basic graph is, right? You know that, uh, you know, you can change the amplitude of this thing with the A value. You can change the, you can change the phase shift, or sorry, not the phase shift. You can change the period. Could you guys uh, maybe stop talking, you guys, or at least the one of you who's talking? Um, you can change the period with changing the B value. Uh, you can change you can change this, um, change the phase shift, move it left to right, and you can change the vertical shift of the thing here, right? All four of those things affect that graph the same way. It's going to be the same thing with uh, with the other graphs here. So if we get rid of that, but we look at the tangent graph, the tangent graph looks like looks like that to start with. It has asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2. The first one is at 90 degrees or pi over 2, but they're pi apart. Okay. All the changes work the same way here. This is going to be harder to see because you don't really talk about the amplitude of this because there isn't a maximum value. It goes on forever. You, although you can expand it vertically, right? You could just make the curve taller or shorter, but it's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be as easy to see how it's changed. What I would say is what you can do is just know that, whoops, you can, you can know that in the scale actually I have here. Let's pause this for a second. How do we do that? Okay, asymptotes happen there. Any any horizontal changes are going to affect the asymptotes, the location. I don't have them drawn on here, but you can imagine they're just the vertical lines that go there. If you change the, the period of the thing, it's going to move the asymptotes. They're going to change as well. Right? If you if you cut the the period in half, or actually if you double the period there, if you make B 0.5, it doubles the period it's going to double the location of the asymptotes. Instead of happening on the normal graph at pi over 2, where are they going to happen now? Here, pi over, sorry. They're going to happen at, at uh, on the purple one at pi, right? They're all going to be twice as big. If you make this a 2, it's going to cut the asymptotes in half, their locations in half. Okay, they happen twice as often. Instead of happening at pi over 2, the first one's going to happen at pi over 4. All those sorts of changes, you know, you don't usually talk about vertical shifts or anything like that. You could talk about phase shift if you really wanted to and move this a little bit. The hard part for people here is remembering what the basic graphs look like. So what I started you here with is remembering what the basic graphs look like. The graph of tangent you should, you should know from just thinking about the values as you go around. Tangent of some angle is, if you imagine the coordinates somewhere here on a circle, coordinates of that are x, y. What's the tangent of that? Not a very big picture here, but how are they related to x and to y here? What's the tangent of that? It's what? y over x, right? y over x, it, it's affected by both of them. The sine and the cosine are each related to just one of those coordinates, but it's, it's related to both of those things. As you go around, tangent is zero when this is zero, okay? Tangent is zero when y is zero, right? That makes sense. When you have a fraction, it's zero when the numerator is zero. And it is undefined when the denominator is zero. Undefined when x equals zero. 
The other way to think about it then I guess is just draw a picture and think about it's zero for the horizontal things. Okay? When when the angle is, is zero or one eighty or three sixty, those angles, the tangent is zero. But it's undefined for the vertical ones. Right? Because cosine the x coordinate is zero. It's undefined up there. So if you're putting the asymptotes on here, it's zero. And then there's going to be an asymptote, except if you're drawing it under the tangent one, of course. Zero, asymptote. Zero, asymptote. And then just fill the graph in from there. Okay, it just alternates there. One of the things happens every two pi. There's going to be another asymptote right here, zero. And then the curve just goes up to the right like this. If you want to draw it accurately, you can put in the other two points you know, which is at pi over 4, it should be a 1. So if you want to draw it accurately, you can follow those two points, especially if you're doing vertical compressions or expansions. This graph doesn't look very good. but Okay, because a tangent of 45 degrees is 1. If you think about that triangle, 1, 1, root 2, tangent of 45 degrees is 1, so every other angle that's related to that is also 1. So that's what it looks like. I think people just have more trouble with this because the graph sort of looks, it's not as nice of a curve because it has no maximum value. It's not easy to see what the vertical changes are. As long as you know what the basic graph looks like, then you can make the changes. If you knew that, if you wanted to make this three times as tall, well, this doesn't change. If you want to make it three times as tall, the zero doesn't change. The asymptote wouldn't change. The only thing that would change is the height of all the points, and I guess you'd have to just make all these points more expanded. And it's hard to see, but it would be just more elongated like this vertically, stretched out like that. If you had to do y equals, this would be y equals tan of 3x. No, it wouldn't. What would it be? That's not right. It would be 3 tan x, absolutely. Okay, it would be stretched out vertically. As for the other graphs here, knowing the basic graphs, if you want to know what cotangent or cosecant or something looks like, if you want to locate, you have to kind of know their basic shape. And then if you want to know the other stuff about them, think about how they're related to. Like cosecant's related to sine. So just imagine what the sine graph looks like. And then just go from there. It's got zeros here. So that's where the asymptotes of the other graph are going to be. Okay? The asymptotes of this graph are going to be where the zeros of this one are. So it's going to happen at, again, if, if you just imagine what sine looks like there. Whoops. Actually, I drew it too tall there, didn't I? It only goes up to 1, the negative 1. So asymptotes of cosecant are going to be where the zeros of this thing are. It, it alternates the same way here. you got asymptotes that far. They're, they're the same width apart as the tangent graph. The only thing is it doesn't ever intersect the axis here. Sine never goes outside of this. So cosecant is never inside of those values. It's just these U-shaped things like this, right? Because it, as this one is decreasing, this one's increasing. And then this on this side, it's the same thing here. You could put a few other points in there to make it more accurate if you want, but this is probably good enough for here. Rough sketch of the graph, just its basic features. The other two you can draw for yourself. Cotangent actually looks very similar to the tangent, except it's going down instead. If you were doing the reciprocal of this, anywhere there's a zero, there's going to be an asymptote. Anywhere there's an asymptote, there's going to be a zero. Cotangent graph actually just looks like this. It, cro it intersects at 1 and negative 1. It crosses there. It goes there. It's like that. Okay. The asymptotes are in a different place. They're where the zeros of these are. But it's not going to help for you just to copy down the four graphs I draw.